Welcome to the I Work For Him podcast. I'm Michael Mariko, producer of the I Work For Him radio program, the voice of the faith and work movement. Our mission is to transform the workplace of every Christian into a mission field. What does that look like in your workplace? Let's find out right now. You've tuned into I Work For Him, the mouthpiece for the faith and work movement. We're your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Thanks for being with us today, everybody. And, you know, Jim, I'm just excited that we get this opportunity to um, talk to our listeners, to have them be a part of conversations. But if you ever have any comments or anything that you want to connect with us directly, because I know a lot of it's kind of you're, you're in a passive position when you're just listening to a podcast please reach to, out to us by going to our website, iworkforhim.com. That's iwork4him.com. And there we actually have a contact us page. I'd love to hear from you and see if there's anything that we can do um, to encourage you or if you have any questions or comments or anything like that. We're just an open book, aren't we, Jim? Yeah, un- yeah, sometimes a little too far open. Hey, today's story is a fun one, a story with intrigue, divorce, financial ruin, and amazing restoration. Not many of us would be willing to admit that for 15 years, we were busy striving to gain all the world had to offer, but came up empty only to realize that without surrender, there really is no success. God intersected our guest's life at a time when everything seemed hopeless, and that's where our story becomes really fun. Just like in the story of Joseph, after much trial, humiliation, and perseverance, Kenny Hill saw God do amazing things in his work, personal, and ministry life once he got started co-laboring with God. Kenny started at Home Depot while in college and eventually rose to a much higher levels, but his favorite job was turning around the most troubled Home Depot in America, the one in Cascade, Georgia. Okay, I've rambled enough. Kenny Hill is here today along with his wife, Clarissa, to share their story of how God rescued them and turned their home improvement store nightmare into one of miraculous impact and renovation Kenny and Clarissa Hill, welcome to I Work For Him. Welcome and thank you for having us. Thank you. It's, it's fun. All right. You know, Kenny, when did you first meet Jesus? So actually, I was raised in the church. So I remember vacation Bible school when I was about eight years old. I gave my life to Christ. Uh, but somewhere around uh, high school to college, I figured, well, I don't need all that church stuff. Um, so I figured I was going to let education uh, take me where I needed to go. So, yeah, I, I did my own thing. But after college and uh, beginning my work career, God reminded me with a nice tap on the shoulder that uh, I still needed a savior. So I rededicated my life uh, about six years into the 15 years of toil that I was uh, experiencing. And that toil started, um, well, let's just say, when did you start working at Home Depot? Because this is part of the story. So when did you start working there? Yes, I actually started while I was a student in college. I started just a part-time job while I was in college and uh, fell in love with the culture, fell in love with helping people, um, and just never intended for it to become my career. Uh, But that was God's plan for me. So it started in college and ended up being a a one career career. (laughs) Which is absolutely amazing that you have that story. But the first 15 years of that journey at Home Depot, honestly, were full of utter frustration for you. Why is that? And then tell us what part Psalm 127 plays in that. Yes. So... Uh, Psalm 127 just reminds us that unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor build it in vain. And unless the Lord watches the city, the watchmen watch in vain. So you can translate that to mean anything you're trying to do. If the Lord's not doing it, if you're not doing it with the Lord, then you're doing it in vain. And I was trying to build a career. And when I look back, Martha, it's really clear. Um, I was suffering uh, from rejection. Uh, I was, my mom was a single parent, didn't have my dad in my life. So growing up, I was really uh, focused on performing, trying to uh, outpace the shame and the rejection Mm. of my past. And I took that into career thinking that if I would receive promotion, if I got a big title, if I was making lots of money and people were looking up to me, that would replace what I was missing on the inside. 
And that's what led to the 15 years of striving and striving only to never receive what I was uh, attempting to gain. Um, so I was building the house of my career uh, out of performance and the Lord was not in it. When did you finally get to the end of your rope, which is when Clarissa comes into the picture? When Talk a little about, uh, because we often say on the show, and we've often said it as teaching, is that until we get to the end of our rope, we often don't realize that God's been holding out a rope to us all along going, I got the rope right here. Why don't you just grab on? My rope is better. But often we have to get to the end of our rope. Talk to us about that experience. Yeah, Jim, you're right. It's so true. I, I was at a crisis point where I had done everything that I could think of in my career. I tried performance. I've tried uh, networking and contact, knowing the right people. I've tried you know, everything that you can do in the business uh, arena and it wasn't working. And my career was, was in a stalemate. It was a miserable place. And then my first marriage crumbled. It just, I, I, and I didn't see it coming. And so I found myself serving in my church, uh, reading my Bible and praying every day, but just living in misery. And I was like, something is wrong here. Uh, and I needed to make an, I needed to change my perspective. At that time, I saw God as someone who was um, focused on accountability. Uh, he was someone focused on uh, me doing the right things. And if I earned uh, through my efforts uh, a blessing, then it, it was him who decided when that would happen. And not having a father, I didn't know God as a loving father. And so I had to come to the end of everything I was trying to do to throw my hands up and say, this is not working, God, I need help. Uh, and he told me that I needed to refocus on love because that's who he is, love. And uh, once I understood his love for me and, and, and I came to grips with that, then he gave me the charge and the challenge to go and represent him in my workplace. And that is when um, I began to see that there was a whole different perspective than I'd ever learned in church, that I'd ever tried to do on my own that God was calling me to represent love in the workplace. Mm, that's amazing that, you know, it uh, seems like a simple lesson, but boy, you had to get, <laughs> there was a lot that had to go into that. So um, hearing that firsthand is so great. And you pull all that together. And in the end, at the end of your rope, God says, not only am I going to teach you how to love at work, I'm going to teach you how to love in marriage. And that's when you met Clarissa. And we're going to pick that story up when we come back right here and I work for him as we're talking with Kenny and Clarissa Hill. She's been very patient. Don't worry, Clarissa, we're getting to you next. If you're listening to I work for him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. As we talk with Kenny Hill, he's written his book about his story and it's called Elevated, My Journey to Co-Laboring with God. And we're going to give away a copy a little later on this podcast. You got lots more of the story coming up right here and I work for him. Hang on for just a second. You know the kind of person that always tells you about the latest trends or the special deals around town? Well, lean in, because here's a message from that kind of person. The Awaken Podcast Network is the place to be. Go to awakenpodcastnetwork.com and unlock God's purpose for your work with help from some friends. You will find a gathering place of podcasts that provide simple tools, faith stories, and conversations that will inspire and equip you to vibrantly live out your faith in your work today. Go ahead, check out awakenpodcastnetwork.com and then be that kind of person and tell a friend. Hey, welcome back to I Work For Him as we're talking with Kenny and Clarissa Hill about their story and how God wove together their work into learning how to co-labor with God as they learned how to love each other. Clarissa, you met Kenny somewhere between the end of Kenny's rope and his march forward into Home Depot and to learning how to love at Home Depot. Describe for us how you two met and what you saw God doing in Kenny's life when he was at that frayed end of his rope and getting a handhold on God's. So Kenny and I met through a mutual friend, and we initially just spoke on the phone for about a month before I would agree to meet him in person. He was too much of a hot <laughs> then, mess. Is that what the deal was? You like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then, you know, we allowed for the blind date to come to a completion by actually meeting in person. And I guess that's the end of the story. 
No, no, no. That's the beginning of this story. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Right. Very true. Very true. So um, in the process of, right, meeting Kenny and then entering into the covenant relationship of marriage, I saw that he was definitely committed in his walk with God. And that was that's what was important to me, that here you will have somebody that is a true believer and that's going to walk out what God has called him to do. And that was inspiring to me. And that helped me to even realize the importance of Clarice. You just don't take the word and and what God is saying for just what it says, but we actually live it out. So that's what um, I kept on watching and seeing him being faithful and committed to what God called him to do. You know, that is it. It's amazing that you could see that in him and see God, you know, stirring in his heart and everything. So what was it about Kenny that made you decide to marry him? I think it was that. I think I, I, I love to see that he was committed and faithful um, first to God. But then he also in many ways showed me that just the, the quality and the integrity that he had as as a man. So of who would turn that down? You know, a woman, once you realize that here you have somebody that's serious about his walk with God, but then also knows how to treat a lady and how to be a man of integrity, mm-hmm. then that was enough for me to say, OK, God, my eyes are open. <laughs> you know, I have to make a decision and say, yes, you know, this is this is somebody that I need in my life. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. I like that. So, Kenny, you not only got married to Clarissa, you also had this real major turnaround in how you decided to work at Home Depot. You decided to co-labor with God at work at Home Depot. What was your position then? And and what did that, what's it look like to co-labor with God? So that's a good question. When I first got that assignment, Jim, I kind of said the same thing. What does that look like? Uh, Because I actually was trying to get out of Home Depot. Uh, My church had an opening in the youth ministry where I served, they had a full-time staff position. And I applied thinking, oh, here's my way to get out of, you know, the frustration at Home Depot. And uh, the director told me, you know, we love you. you. You do a great job when you volunteer. Go home and pray about it. And then if, if God's good with you, then come back and we'll, we'll get you uh, in position. And I didn't even get all the way home, Jim, before the Holy Spirit said, your job is your mission field. Mm. And I was just like, what in the world does that mean? Um, I said, and I, and I really, I, I said, God, people in China, people in Africa, they need missionaries because they haven't heard of Jesus. I said, all these people around me, they've heard of Jesus. And he said, yeah, they've heard, but now they need to see. And your job is to go and let them see. Uh, so that became my challenge to, to be uh, love personified, servant leadership investing in those people around me. I was current at that time, I was an assistant manager uh, over the operations in the store. So I had about 30 employees that reported to me and I made it my business to pour in and nurture, support those 30 individuals any and every way I could. Um, and it began to change. The first thing that happens, it, it began to heal my heart at that time being uh, divorced from my first marriage. That, was, that left a scar, and it was healing that. When I would help someone else and serve someone else, it was healing me. So it became contagious because it was like therapy. Uh, but the more I poured into my people, the more people wanted to be on my team. So now I have the privilege of being able to choose who I had on my team. So I got the first pick, so to speak. And so my team started performing better and better. And so it created two things. Basically, love became my brand within the company. And then I became the person that people wanted to work for. So I, my career, God just elevated it uh, tremendously beyond my expectations. You know, I'm curious because you talk about um, co-laboring with God, and that's part of the title of your book. And again, it's called Elevated, My Journey to Co-Laboring with God. I was trying to read it all at the oh. same time, but that's okay. Um, and Actually, now is probably a good time to segue and let the listeners know that um, Kenny is willing to give away a copy of his book, Elevated. Call our listener line at 866-713-9675. That's 866-713-WORK. And one person will be able to win a copy of that book. 
So I'm curious about this word co-laboring. Like, so you, yes. you, God was telling you just get love. Basically, that became your brand. Um, but what did that mean for you to co-labor with God? Yes, it, that's important, Martha, because you can't do that in your own strength. You know, because people are hard to love. People don't believe in God. People don't want your help. So in, in, in my, I started in my own strength trying to do that. And it's like, man, I, I can do this for a couple of hours, but <laughs> still got a long way to go. But so I had to count on God to love through me. I had to count on believing and receiving his love for me. And then it didn't matter if someone uh, didn't want my help or if they said, you know, I don't get away from me. I don't need your help or whatever. It didn't matter what their response was. I was consistently pouring out of what he had poured into me. And that's the co-laboring part. It's, so it's not just like, I'm going to go and be super nice to everybody I run into because, you know, that, that's only going to last so long. Somebody's going to tell you they don't like your outfit and then, you know, there goes your day. But when you have a heart for people the way God has a heart for you, when you see people uh, beyond their role as an employee or a customer, you see that's a creation of God that he wants them to know that they're loved and he's sending you to be an extension of that. That's the co-laboring part that you're allowing God to use you. Mm -hmm. So what did you see as a result? I mean, we're, you're talking about you started loving people at work, uh, of which many of them, I'm sure at first were quite unlovable. What did you see God do with your new approach? Uh, transformation. Uh, you mentioned before the, the problems that that store location had. So it was, you know, any area you picked, it was at the bottom. It was just, but it's the transformation started with me investing and loving on the staff and charging them to show that same concern and love for every customer. Hmm. And we began to, so it transformed the, in, the interpersonal first, and then the transactional part happened where the numbers, the sales, the, the profitability, all those other things came after that relational component was secure, where we're here to serve anyone who shows up qualifies, then we're going to love on you. So Clarissa, you're sitting there alongside of Kenny through all of this. What did you see changing in his life and how did that impact your marriage? As he learned to love people at work, how did that impact your marriage? Well, I definitely saw that. And even from the beginning when we met that he had a servant's heart. So Kenny loves to give and and very attentive to other people. So, you know, that was a challenge as you have a family and he's gone or he's missing or, you know, he's committed himself to certain activities, then, um, you know, we had to balance that out without a doubt, especially having children. But it, it made me realize and, and see the importance of getting out of your own bubble, getting out of your own existence. And that's what God, you know, has put us here on earth to be relational or to, to really see other people and that, that we all have needs and we all have, we have, um, or we want people to recognize sometimes just beyond the superficial and just go dig a little bit deeper and say that, oh, you know, I care or you don't, you're not having a good day. What else is going on in life? You want somebody to take that step. So I, I really grew in, in knowing that that's who he is. And he's taught me the same thing. You, Clarissa, you got to go beyond just a greeting <laughs> or a smile and, you know, really get in tune with somebody else. Take the time. When we come back, lots more with Kenny and Clarissa Hill as they share more of the story. We're going to get to hear about Clarissa's job, but we're also going to hear about Kenny's cushy job at the, really, the headquarters store and how he left it to go back to the toughest store in America. You're listening to I Work For Him <laughs> with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg, as we talk with Kenny and Clarissa Hill. And it's all highlighted in Kenny's book, Elevated My Journey to Co-Laboring with God, of which we're going to give away a copy today. 866-713-9675. We'll be right back. Want to build a profitable side hustle that impacts people with truth and healing in themselves and their leadership? Then look at becoming a certified leadership coach with Giant. Giant has been in the leadership space for over 13 years and has over 500 coaches in over 127 countries. Their coaches are being hired by Fortune 500 companies and organizations like I Work For Him. 
Jim and I took the Giant Sherpa training under one of these great coaches to become leaders worth following. Giant gives you everything you need to start your own coaching business from scratch, like hands-on training from top-level coaches, access to an all-in-one online platform to run your entire coaching business, and you get to join a thriving community of coaches around the world. To get started, Giant is hosting a coaching business workshop to help you learn how to build a successful coaching business. This workshop is 100% free, and you can reserve your spot by going to giant.tv forward slash I work for him. If you're ready to impact people and get paid to do it, go to giant.tv forward slash I work for him. That's giant.tv forward slash I work for him. Welcome back to I Work For Him as we're talking today with Kenny and Clarissa Hill about their story of how God worked in their lives as as God taught Kenny to co-labor with him at Home Depot. And then he gets to meet Clarissa and the rest of the stories that we're talking about today. Kenny, you were, for the for about a year, you got to the management position at the Cascade, Georgia Home Depot. And then you got promoted to the cushy Cumberland, Georgia store which was the store where all the new stuff gets tried out for Home Depot. And it was, it was like the highlight store of America. And then God says, okay, Kenny, I'm going to see how much you really trust me. And you were offered, and at, at, at the Cushy Cumberland Georgia store, you were co-general manager, and you were offered full general manager of the store back in Cascade, Georgia. It was a hot mess, and they wanted you to go back and take over that store. Why did you leave Cushy Cumberland World and go back to Cascade, Georgia? And what happened? Yeah, Jim. So that was uh, a real a test of my trust uh, and my heart for others. Um, sometimes when God uh, teaches us to love and see things the way he sees them, he'll test us to see if we're only doing it to our benefit or as long as it benefits us, or if we really have the servant's heart. So when I left uh, Cascade and, and arrived at Cumberland, it was like going to Disneyland. I mean, everything's new, uh, still a lot of hard work, but just every benefit that uh, the company could provide. Uh, and almost a year to the day that I arrived, they had an opening back at the Cascade store. And the uh, leadership team said, you know, which, initially, will you just go back until we find somebody to permanently take over, take over. And I said, I'll go back temporarily. And I went back and I, you know, it quickly reminded me, there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, but as I started to do the work for my temporary term, God started dealing with my heart that this is where I said, this was your mission field and you're not done mm. with that. And I start looking at the lives of the people and that's what did it for me, Jim. Uh, there were people there who still uh, wanted promotion in their careers, but didn't have the ability to navigate that on their own. It's kind of like Jesus when he described the people uh, as sheep without a shepherd. Uh, they needed a leader to show them the way and not just a leader who was there just to do enough to keep things from getting worse. Um, so when the time came for me to go back uh, to Cumberland, I told my leader, you know what, I want to stay, I want to take this store on, and I want to turn it around. And it was because God had dealt with my heart on finishing the assignment of this mission field, uh, and it, it, the job wasn't complete. So I had an opportunity to turn my back on the assignment and try to go on on my own, but I had learned without him. The first 15 years of my <laughs> career reminded me that that's not the, that's not the decision to make. I needed him. I needed to co-labor with him for, for the rest of my career. Yeah, oh, we all have to. We, we can learn that lesson. Most of us learn it the hard way. We could do it our way. That doesn't ever work out well. <laughs> and like you said, you can love somebody for a little while on your own with your own efforts and things like that. Even, um, but, you know, God gives us the ability to see what that, a little bit more of that story when he's in charge and where he takes us. So, Clarissa, you are actually Dr. Clarissa Hill, and you are an OBGYN, which that's just amazing. Um, I, I, am, I can't even imagine all that you deal with on a daily basis. But as Kenny started to practice more of the, you know, his work being his ministry and that mission field and loving on people, 
How did that affect you in your work? I think it really served more as an example. Like I mentioned before, Clarissa, dig deeper. I'm used to treating physical ailments and talking about what I can do from the medical aspect. But then there's the mind, there's the soul, which is the emotions, the the um, uh, the, the source of a person. You know what makes them up. That sometimes, especially ladies, if you get them talking, they will talk. So what I, ha- I, I have no to- idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But I learned to you know to inquire more about. Hey, what's going on in life, and what are your plans, and just dig a little bit deeper more than, oh, you're here for your exam. Do you have any problems? What are your complaints, and what else do I need to refill refill for you? So I learned to, um, right, to, to open up and say, Clarissa, you're not only a physician by title, but you're a Christian and you're a, a daughter of God and you believe in him and you love him. So you love them. So whatever it takes to, to show them, I'm not only here functioning in the capacity of my job, but I'm, I'm actually engaged into making sure that, okay, are you okay? Do we need to pray? Do we need to to find a scripture to, that we'll both meditate on for you, you know, like together mm. we'll do this, you know, basically like somebody uh, of accountability. So that's what I learned while watching Kenny and how he engaged with his, um, with his, his work staff. Wow. And every woman listening is going, where are you located? Yeah, well, because I, I want you on, <laughs> on my team as a doctor. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you can, you can plug your, where you go to work or not. That's entirely up to you. There's a long list of patients who, if you want to see her, it'll be like November before you get in. But it'll be worth it. I I know, right? Hopefully so. But no, God has been good. And right, just like Kenny says, as he's given us so much grace and you realize where he's brought you in your life and the, the patience that he's even taken with you, there you go. It's just like, okay, take that patience and give it away, you know? Take that time and invest in somebody else's life and make sure that you're not only serving because this is your title or this is your job, but you are truly um, you're truly concerned and you want to show love. You want to practice love and you want to be available and vulnerable to a certain degree with with another person. Hmm. Wow. I was going to ask you to just share a word of encouragement with us, but you just went right ahead and did that. That's beautiful. (laughs) I just love that. And, and like Martha said, uh, there's a lot of women out there in the world that are going, I want an OBGYN <laughs> just like Clarissa Hill. Kenny, final words of encouragement. There are so many people that look at retail with kind of a, no, I don't want to work retail. And, and certainly a home improvement store, which is a little dirty, messy, and you know the floors aren't, you know, don't have carpet. But you had a career of ministry at Home Depot that lasted over 30 years. Speak some words of encouragement out there to let people know what's on your heart and why they should consider doing the same thing. Yes, wherever you are, uh, it, you need to consider, has God placed you there? Uh, or did you arrive there of your own will and your own power? And if God has placed you there, there are people around you who need what he's placed in you. Um, they need your prayers. There's so many times I prayed for people. Uh, I used to pray for my whole staff. I get this sheet out and pray over each person and, and just hear the testimonies, Jim, of people coming back saying, you know what? I was thinking about suicide, uh, but something told me, no, they need you at work. So you can't do that. I mean, just God using uh, intercessory prayer, uh, which to me is, the, is the, the highest level of a servant leader when you actually intercede for those people who God places uh, under your, on your team. Uh, so wherever God has you, there's a reason. And if we take the focus off yourself for just a minute and say, God, show me why you have me here and who you would have me to show your love to, who you would have me to be an encouragement to, that the world, the marketplace is full of people who are starving uh, and deprived of love and compassion and we're called to be light and salt. And so I want to encourage you to embrace the opportunity no matter where you are. If your job is one that's miserable, it's probably because you're focusing on yourself so much. If you take that focus off of yourself and focus on who around you that God could use you to encourage or support, then the job that you're doing that's miserable will become a place that is peaceful. Mm -hmm. Just be encouraged that 
where you are is just not uh, by happenstance. You are assigned by God. And while you're on assignment, he has provision for you and he has an assignment for you to reach somebody else. I love that. Kenny and Clarissa Hill, thank you so much for being an iWork Ram today. Thanks so much for sharing your book, Elevated My Journey to Co-Laboring with God. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. We encourage you to go out to iWorkFram.com and join the iWorkFram Nation. Make that commitment to praying for your coworkers and employees by name each and every day, looking for ways to serve them over and above what your job requires you to do, looking for ways to befriend them outside of the workplace, but looking for ways to pray with people when you notice you're having a rough day, but all along being a person of excellence. You guys did a great job. You said all of those points. You didn't even know we had an I Work Ram Nation pledge. It's fantastic. <laughs> but you also brought up this other point. We've said this on the show a thousand, maybe 2,000 times. Your workplace, it's your mission field. And in that mission field, you and me, we may be the only Jesus our coworkers, our employees, our bosses may ever meet. The job that we hold and the work that we do, none of that is by chance. The job that you hold the people that you work with, none of that is by chance. The people that you work with need to meet Jesus, and you may be their only chance. Kenny and Clarissa Hill, you have laid that out for us and made such a great example. Again, once again, thank you for being an I Work For Him. Awesome. Thank you. You've been listening to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers in our workplace. It's our mission field, but ultimately, I, I work, work For him. him. Did you know that God has a calling on your life? It's true. He's called you to bring Jesus to the world. For some, that may look like a pulpit or a foreign mission field, but for most of us, it looks like a construction site, a cubicle, a hospital, or a classroom. Wherever it is that you work, live, volunteer, and invest, that is your mission field. To learn more about integrating your faith into your work and retirement, check out our books, I Work For Him, She Works For Him, and I Retire For Him by going to iworkforhim.com slash bookstore. Thank you for listening to the I Work For Him podcast with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Please visit iWorkForHim.com to learn more about connecting your faith and work, to join the I Work For Him nation, or subscribe to our weekly blog. You can also follow us on social media at I Work For Him to stay up to date and meet our guests. If today's message spoke to you, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your review will launch more workplace missionaries across America. That's at I Work For Him and online iWorkForHim.com. I Work The number 4 him.com